What is up ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Mooman11 here bringing you back by popular demand an updated Udyr guide because Rito just can't seem to keep game changing updates in their pants. Seriously, with every new guide I make, they seem to come out with some new unimaginable change like, I don't know, adding a new mid lane turret or buffing Satan's spawn where his blind now causes your computer to literally internally combust into a conflagration that consumes your house and soul in an explosion of seething hatred because <laughs> buff Tito, am I right? <laughs> but enough of that cancer, let's get on to Udyr. Now, I have played a few games with this champ, and the only reason I don't have Mastery 7 is because of this stupid blue essence crap with RNG Jesus not being on my side, but that's a rant for another video. For Masteries, we're going to be running 18-0-12, and for the Keystone Master, we'll be taking Super Mario's favorite upgrade, Deathfire Touch. Yahoo! Onto runes, grab yourself some AD reds and yellows, attack speed blues, and lifesteal quints. Now you're ready to make like the Easter Bunny and hop into a game. After you buy a hunter's machete, three health pots, and a warding trinket, play the part of a certain Republican nominee and head to the southern edge of your jungle to survey the area where you're gonna have Noxus pay for that lovely 25-foot gold-bladed border wall that is certain to keep out those illegal aliens who are always coming over to steal our precious jungle camps. Now before Grom spawns in, you'll want to have already activated your tiger stance at base for some extra on-hit damage, and like Ray Rice in an elevator, hit Grom again with another Q before he gets a chance to recover. This will increase your clear time and let your bot laners get back to farming their first wave. When you're at blue buff, start the fight with your tiger stance and switch to turtle stance as soon as possible. Doing this will allow you to keep a pretty fast attack speed while giving you more life steal than Hillary Clinton has done to Bill. I mean, look at that poor guy. You can bet when he was telling Monica Lewinsky he wanted her to suck him dry, this was probably not what he had in mind. But after you smite blue buff, finish off the sentinels and turtle stance to reduce the number of unemployed workers in the US, then head over to the wolf camp to help push or even blow them in the right direction to find a job. Cause like Bill always said, blow jobs are better than no jobs. Now that's some domestic policy I can really see myself thrusting my support into all night long. However, with all the turmoil and unrest going on in the US and Europe as our countries play the age-old game of who can f*** themselves over harder, we're gonna need all the foreign aid and support we can get, and luckily everyone's favorite arms dealer Scuttle is here to ensure our interests come before all others. As you're negotiating with Scuttle how much you want to spend on nukes and other weapons of mass destruction like the ones we never found in Iraq to guarantee your success in the upcoming and very exciting World War III, make sure to ask how his wife Sandra's doing ever since the last arms deal he made went terribly wrong and she was captured by Somali warlords who demanded the downfall of the West in return for her unharmed release. Once you've finished chatting with Scuttle and the coast is clear, put another point in your turtle stance and start attacking the dragon. If you follow the previous steps, you should only just now have to start using a potion after you've taken a few hits, and go ahead and smite drag too for some free damage. And don't worry, it'll be back up near the end of the fight in case an enemy comes to contest it. As you're attacking, make sure to stay vigilant, like Taylor Swift monitoring social media, in case a certain enemy jungler or whoever decides to join you in your casual game of patty cake with dragon. And depending on which dragon spawns in, you'll usually either have at least one or even two potions remaining at the end of your fight, which is totally enough health to go back in for round two with your bot side jungle camps. They'll be more than happy to welcome you back into their short-lived lives to see you destroy everything they've ever known and loved. Like when Tammy from Apartment 203B ran back into that scumbag Billy's arms even after he called her rude names in their last argument, ran out on her and took out his frustration by terrorizing the local squirrel population with a slingshot and a stockpile of 1974 Denver minted limited edition quarters. As you're recalling, tune into the breaking news report bot lane as your teammates secure your team first blood and- Oh, oh lord, oh my goodness. You just know Vayne is going to find a way to blame you for her getting outplayed in her own tower, but we'll save that for later. While you're resting at the Summoner's Rift Marriott waiting for your health and mana to regen, upgrade your Hunter's Machete into a Stalker's Blade and start building towards either a Warrior's Enchantment or a Blood Razor. When you continue onto your top jungle, find solace in listening to my sonorous voice rock your gentle, supple body into a restful sleep as I tell you in which situations to buy which enchantment. Warrior is a great path to go if the enemy team is primarily comprised of squishies. Just like that flabby area under your chest you call a belly, you fat piece of blood razor on the other hand is good when you're facing a team with one or more very tanky champions like Maokai, Alistar, or the tankiest champion of them all, Ash. Deciding which of these two enchantments to choose is more important than you think. If you take blood razor, you're not going to be able to delete those ADCs as fast, but you'll make up for it by melting through those enemy tanks like the human race did to the ozone layer in the 90s and early 2000s with chlorofluorocarbons, an environmentally devastating chemical agent that is said to have been a main contributor in today's global warming. After you've been educated on the effects of the now banned CFCs and you've cleared your top jungle, it's time to make your presence known to the enemy team like a father who abandoned his child at birth only to reconnect with him later when he realizes his son owns a growing YouTube channel that's already made him over $6 in ad revenue. Please come back, Dad. Activate your bear stance to come tearing out of the jungle like Ricky Bobby being chased by coked up Jean Gerard and use the magical powers of Yogi Bear to teleport your stun across a seemingly impossible distance to finish him off with a hit from your tiger stance and a flash of your mastery, you beautiful BMing douche nozzle. 
And now that you've gotten that rush of adrenaline from looking into a man's eyes as you extinguish the last dying breath from his collapsed lungs, you're gonna have to calm yourself down somehow. So recall to go back to Chuck E. Cheese. Walk up to that prize counter to exchange your hard-earned Wackadarius tickets for the necessary items to work on completing either your warrior enchantment or a blood razor. And since your ADC has been politely pinging you over and over and over to come visit them for a lovely holiday in the swampy vast wasteland of bot lane, head on down to prepare for a gank after making sure to bring some delicious frogs now for your needy little ADC's family reunion. But after wasting a considerable amount of time sitting there watching your boosted to bronze vein take needless hits without ever presenting an opportunity for a decent gank, run along back into your forest like a modern day Little Red Riding Hood, except that instead of being an adorable little girl, you're actually a 40 year old man running around the woods in a bear costume, who has honestly probably been arrested before for chasing little girls. But unlike your fellow pedophiles, you're not one to sit around watching from the bushes when there's a damsel in distress. You're a misunderstood gentleman who just can't seem to win over that babe with your boyish charm and your chivalrous persona. Your mighty presence is more than enough, however, to scare off those bullies and score a date later with your mid laner, so head back into your jungle to prepare a nice chicken parmesan and get some rock hard abs for later tonight. And since we all know your outfit is most important on a first date, you'll want to pair your stylish cat t-shirt and pink fanny pack filled to the brim with spaghetti with an upgraded stalker's blade and new pair of boots from the Derelict Collection. And what better way to kick off the evening of festivities than by helping out that sorry bot lane of yours since your ADC couldn't figure out that being shot in the face repeatedly by Jinx rockets eventually leads to death and minor discomfort in the buttocks area. I guess what I'm really trying to say is this ADC is a pain in the ass. But just calm yourself and channel your inner pedo bear and wait for a lantern. Just keep waiting and yeah, screw it, just go flash and immediately before Thresh finally tosses his lantern and whittle down that ADC's hit points like a boy scout in his first woodshop class. And like a good support should, Lulu's of course gonna stick around so you can grace her with your powerful pedo slap cause she's obviously asking for it with that outfit, am I right? Now after your fancy double kill, the only thing left to do is bask in the praise and endless thank yous from your ADC you so kindly helped and... Oh, what, what's this? A little bit of friendly flaming from the bronze six vein. Now just kindly remind her of her score, then make some lighthearted rebuttal to defuse the situation and let it all blow over, because a team that works together is a team that wins together. Then smash her with the fact that she's got terrible mechanics, her father's actually a hamster, and she can't win a fair trade as she literally dies as you type that sentence. An ally has been slain. Then when you're picking up some new boots of swiftness from Macy's during their incredible doorbuster special, Vane starts to piss off even more of your team. She's so focused on telling everyone else to pick up their slack that she picks up another death instead. Eventually, the truth comes out that she's a salty hoe, so to remedy that, have a sweet dance-off with the enemy jungler before the entire enemy team decides to come crash the party. They obviously haven't read the rules of engagement, because violence at a dance-off brings dishonor upon your family and dishonor upon your cow. Fortunately, you can just call on your ancestors to give you a speed boost out of there, and after recalling to pick up the parts for a Blade of the Ruin King, you're ready for some sweet, sweet revenge. Begin your tirade by defending your fellow cow friends from the evil Milkman Darius, then gather your whole herd mid lane to prepare for a stampede. You, being the most elite cow there is, deserve every kill despite how hard your teammates work for him. So remember you can always help your teammates with your smite. But your generosity doesn't stop there. If an enemy's getting away, just activate your bear stance and follow Vayne's advice of running it down mid so you can catch up and secure yourself another kill. I, I'm, I mean, um, clearly you want to just spread the wealth amongst your teammates like a modern day Karl Marx, so let, let them take the kill. You, you didn't even want it in the first place, right? Then it's time for every player's favorite part of the game. Waiting for your teammates to group for Dragon for so long that the entire enemy team is back up by the time they're finally ready. And although you've grown several gray hairs in the process, you've waited long enough for Vayne to mature like a fine cheese it So just signal your top laner into the fight and charge others first into thick of it as Vayne goes full faker with her amazing kiting mechanics, wow. and after a quick little chase, you've managed to curdle the enemy team like expired milk. And when the shock of how amazing that Vayne was finally subsides, you'll find that you've taken a dragon and somehow become the target of a montage where you pick up kill after kill after kill. And Talon wanted so desperately to be in the montage by claiming he could outrun you and Usain Bolt that you've got to do the no scope cross map 360 fadeaway smite Sui with extra points for BMing both through flashing your mastery and in chat. With all those kills, you'll be so powerful that you and your team are melting through bear and even with 3k gold in your pocket. So the only logical thing to do then is irresponsibly force a team fight while your team is completely out of position so that you instantly get CC locked in a free pass to live in eternal peace with Harambe along with the rest of your team and a few lucky enemies, thus effectively wasting Baron buff entirely. But hey, at least you got a nice kick out of it and took a shortcut back to base so you can work on finishing your full build. 
Along with the core items, you'll want to pick between a Trinity Force, Winzo's Rage Blade, Bloodthirster, Infinity Edge, or Mob for some pretty painful offensive stats. And for my 5th or 6th purchase, I usually like to buy at least one defensive item, so pick up either a Thorn Mail, Dead Man's Plate, Guardian Angel, or a ZZ Rot Portal for some nice split push potential. After a few more minutes of kills and enough BM to call you Trick 3G, you'll have completely gutted the enemy base in preparation for one last team fight. The key to completely demoralize the enemy team is to run around and make your presence known to them, but actually only participate in like one of those final kills. That'll show them. And when that victory screen pops up, those enemies will be thinking, I'ma need to get me a beer. I just played against an unstoppable Udyr. Well, there you have it. There's your updated, updated, updated Udyr Jungle Guide.